in nowadays, electricity is more complex. So we have multiple sources, we have power generation still, classical, we have renewables, maybe even some households actually supplying energy. Everything where, where there is electricity, there might be a risk. A risk of, let's say, getting an electric shock, but also a risk of losing the energy. So our, let's say, units you see, let's say, on this board, um, they are placed in switch cabinets and monitoring the electrical supply system. We distinguish between, let's say, three main grounding areas. The most popular one is grounded, or earth system, you might have known from, from at home. Then we have isolated system, isolated system we have in a hospital, an example. And let's say the third grounding system is called resistance grounding system. This is used in huge mining areas. Well, Bender's history started in the 30s. My father was an, an inspector for the German TUV, and therefore he had the idea to develop a monitor which automatically, during normal operation, was measuring the electrical system and to give alarm at a very early stage that something is going wrong. At all, electricity is dangerous and the lack of it as well. Therefore, we are developing intelligent solutions for the industries for today and for tomorrow. If you have no electricity, nothing is working. That means, especially in hospitals or other areas, you cannot switch on the lights, the devices are not running. So it's a very, very important topic. We are needed in all systems. That means from the power supply until the intensive cares or the operational theaters. Mainly we are in the so-called class two operational rooms. That means all these kind of things where critical care is needed, our safety products are saving lives. Our flagship is the isometer. This is a monitoring system and measuring system which is measuring the resistance between the outer conductor and the earth. That means if there is a failure, we measure the resistance and the beauty is we don't have to switch off the whole system. You just get a message, an alarm. The doctor can fulfill his operation only if the power fails completely or the resistance is in a bad mood. Then we switch from the power generation to a battery system or to another system what is running the operation smoothly. We want also to measure the energy so that means if you measure the energy, you know where to save energy. So the decarbonization is more important and uh, helping the environment. And that's the reason why we're doing more things in this direction so that we can really save also the environment and help for the future. If charging infrastructure is not intelligent, there is a significant risk that the electricity grid will get big problems when all cars are charging at the same time when people get home at night. When charging infrastructure is intelligent, this problem is mitigated and there is enough energy for all cars, even if everybody would drive electric um, easily because the cars are charged throughout the whole night and those cars are charged first, which need to leave early. And Bender originally started into the area of electric mobility by applying existing safety products in this new area. Our smart charge controllers are essentially a communication gateway. We are communicating with the vehicle regarding is it able to charge, how much energy does it need to charge. We are talking to uh, the end user and most importantly, we are talking to energy management systems for example, in a private house, but also in the public electricity grid, where we then learn how much energy is actually available to safely and reliably charge all the cars that are connected to the grid. What we do is actually, we try to teach the people the potential employees in the future in a very early stage. So we start in primary schools. So it's very easy actually to 
to have, let's say, our apprenticeship people in second grade, they go in the primary school and they talk and play around with electricity with them. Of course, small voltages, so, but they get bulbs and, and LEDs to glow or have little games to play, uh, touching games where light uh, uh, flashes and so forth. So there's a lot of fun for the kids and they, they really um, appreciate it very much. It is very important that you get really young engineers. Young engineers have different experience. They, um, they are different minded. And um, so therefore we need to get, let's say, people very early, very, you know, attracted to us. And by having, let's say, programs, as I mentioned, we sometimes know them already. So they know us already. Our average age in the department is pretty young and uh, that's why we all have a similar mindset and uh, pull together to achieve our goals. Due to the flexibility of the company, I'm able to plan spontaneous field assignments to help the customer with his devices or full applications in the field. Through the approach product portfolio, there are different challenges, different kind of works at Bender and this is what I personally like. Then, of course, every day is a different challenge, a different task to work. What I see with my kids is especially they are using the smartphone, they are controlling the drones with the smartphone, so everything is connected. You need to think what is the next generation looking for and you have to follow these trends. Everything is connected today. You can see it in, in a lot of uh, other places. If you buy a car, you can automatically get uh, seating, heating, or you can get more horsepower, over the -air updates, automation, digitalization, all these kind of things are really moving forwards and we try to follow this trend to make our products uh, even better in the future.